Ah, this is uh, it's going to be the moment of truth. My little set of Draper security talks bit anti tamper bits and bobs arrived a few minutes ago, so I thought to myself, well, I'd better get out of here and have a look to see whether this ECU has had it or not. Actually, for, for Draper, because Draper has gone downhill quite a lot, and the, the last Draper tools that I bought were really bad, and Draper used to be really good. But now, it comes in a nice little metal box, but it doesn't actually lock. You have to really, really force that for that to get to lock. I think that's disappointing. But anyway, I'm not here to do a review on a Draper tool kit. I'm here to have a look inside this. And I went out especially and bought some specialist fast drying contact cleaner removes oils from electrical contacts because I usually use cleaning things degreaser and things like that and you lot always have a go at me don't ever use WD-40 on electrics or any other cleaner on electrics it has to be specialist blah 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 I know all this but I thought seeing as this is my ECU that runs my entire car I'd better play by the book even though it probably won't pan out and I'll probably break it and something will probably happen anyway but I've got a funny feeling that this is probably going to be full of oil but we will find out in a few minutes when I find the right one that actually fits I'm probably going to find out that it's some strange size that I haven't got but this one should fit like that here we go, lovely jubbly take that one all the way out Hopefully, well, I keep saying this, but I really do hope that it's not for the wall. Because then it's just one less thing. Because if it is, that means I've got to source a new ECU, and then I've got to sort out getting it all programmed for my car. I don't know if I can do that with a Nanocom. Can you do that with a Nanocom? Can you program an ECU with the immobilizer and all that with a Nanocom? Because I've got a Nanocom, so I might not need to pay someone to do that, but we'll find out. So how do you actually open these, I'm assuming? Or does it come off? Or does that come apart from there? It's obviously going to be waterproofed, so... Maybe a little bit of persuasion from a screwdriver. Well, I'm having trouble getting this open, and I don't want to break it. I don't want to break the waterproof seal or anything on it. So I'm wondering if I should just assume, or hope, that it hasn't gone in there, clean all these con connectors up, and go from there, and then just reinstall it. Because it was working fine, I obviously just had the little misfire. Um, but the little misfire is caused by the oil in the, uh, in the loom. So, I don't know. I think what I'll do is, I think I'll just hope that it hasn't gone all the way in there. Um, clean out the connections. And go from there. I've got me a little bit of kitchen paper. A little bit of kitchen paper there, because I haven't got any cloth left. So I'm going to stuff all that in there, try and soak it all up. Clean that one while I'm at it. I love the smell of, um, well, all cleaners, brake cleaner and all that, but electrical connector cleaner smells really good. I love the smell of that. Got to be careful, obviously, not to bend any pins while you're in there. Because that's the last thing you want to be doing. If you're bending pins, you're in trouble then. That's for sure. You don't want to be bending any pins. Loads of oil in the corner. It's everywhere, dudes. It's 
looking a lot cleaner in there now. All I'm going to do now is get some more paper, make sure I get it all in there, try and really hard not to bend any of the pins, because you must be really careful, because if you bend a pin, you're going to be in trouble, because they do snap off very easily. I've had this before, not with not with these Land Rover easy use, but with other connectors and things, you bend a pin, then you're like, oh, well, I'll bend it back, and then you try and bend it back, and then snap, it's off. And then you're fucked, you add it then, you ain't got no chance. So, be really careful not to bend any pins, clean it out the best that I can, and then, uh, I don't know what to do about that. I don't know, man. I know I can get the top off. That's not a problem. But it, I don't want to break, like, damage around the outside of it and then not be able to get it to seal again. Then it won't be waterproof or weatherproof. And if any moisture or water happens to get in there, because at the moment it's sealed, that's that. So I think what I'm going to do... Oh, well, we'll have a look in a minute. Whatever I decide, you'll see in a minute. You'll see what I decide, because it'll come up next. This is under here. We've got our timing chain, we've got our injectors all the way along there, the cam all the way under here. It's a good, good time for you to inspect things. I mean, if you really wanted to, you could check your valve clearances at the same time. I'm not quite sure why there's one different one there. Oh, it's nice, the same. I thought it was a different one. But that's a culprit leaks through there, the oil comes in here and around this gasket gets, seeps into that plug, goes down somehow goes uphill and makes its way into this red plug so I just need to change that now and we'll be away
There's our old one. New one's all in. ACU's all connected back up. So now we've got to try and, well, we won't try and we will hopefully start it up. And then we've got to listen for our misfire and then check for leaks to make sure the rocker cover seal is sealing and to make sure that there's no major leaks around that new plug that we've just put in. There we go. It's a good sign we've not got any lights come up, apart from the SRS light, but I'll probably fix that. I'll probably plug the old Nano Com in, in a minute and see if we can get rid of that. But we're running anyway. I can't hear a misfire. Certainly can't hear a misfire. Sounds quite healthy. Don't seem to be any leaks around that new plug. Drained out. Nothing to worry about there. And we're not misfiring, that's a good thing. Bit of soot. Definitely no misfire though. Right, so we've got an SRS warning light come up, which is basically the airbag. Now I, I do understand that it's the same with all cars, same my old, my old Saxo and many of them. The airbag sensor or seatbelt sensor, what's well, under the passenger seat and under the driver's seat, doesn't really like being moved up and down. The wires comes loose, all this rubbish. But I've moved it. I've checked the wire. Everything seems to be right. It's all connected. So what I'm going to do is try to see if I can wipe that code off to get rid of that with this Nanocom. And if I can, I can't remember how you get into fault codes on the internet, but if I can, then I'm just going to see if it comes back. Uh, oh, airbag. Function locked. <laughs> We've obviously got to pay for that. Anyway, I'm going to see if I can remember how to do the diagnostics and then uh, <laughs> I can't remember how to do it. Right, so we had to ditch the Nanocom, which cost the best part of 500 quid, and then go over to this 80 pound, 10 year old RAC scanner. Now, some of you are probably shouting at me, going, you can't turn that code off with a with a, uh, a scan tool. You can't turn that light off with a scan tool. You've got to fix the problem. Well, oh, oh it's back. Well, I don't know that yet because on, on the uh, on the Saxo, I used to be able to turn it off with, uh, with this scan tool here. So we're going to see how it goes because I can't find a problem over there. The airbag might be faulty. I don't know. I'll just change the steering wheel if it is. But there's no harm in trying. Oh. Hold on a minute. This ha used to have a problem where it wouldn't, the screen wouldn't work if you started it up when it was up here. You had to start it low down. Anyway, so we've got the ignition on. We're going to scan. I don't know whether it will actually connect to this car. I've never connected this to this car before. So we'll see how it goes. Somebody, what was his name? Am Ambo, I think his name was. I can't remember now. In Australia, I wanted to know how to change this gator. I haven't had time to do it yet, dude. So I'm sorry. I just haven't had time. I've got too much troubles going on at the moment. I ain't had time to do it. So um, I don't know how to change it myself yet. I changed the gear one, but I don't know how to do that one yet. Anyway, I don't like letting people down, mate. But uh, I, ain't, I just, I can't. I've got too much going on at the moment to to worry about having to look out to do this, so sorry if I let you down, dude. Anyway, we're still scanning, waiting for vehicle to respond. I don't think it's gonna connect. 
Right, I'm fairly sure it ain't going to connect. It's failed a couple of times. I've made sure the connections are good. It's not compatible with this car, I don't think. I'm pretty sure that's going to be the case. Give it one more go. Here's old Matt. What's going on there, dude? How's it going, buddy? Failed to establish communication. Verify that ignition is on. Blah, blah, blah. Go down. See, verify that the vehicle is OBD2, which I don't think it is. Which is the reason why it doesn't work. So in that case, I'm just simply going to leave the old SRS light there because it's just a light. What can you do? I mean, if I had a choice, which I have got a choice, and I'm probably going to do anyway, I'm going to replace that steering wheel, so I'm not going to have an airbag anyway. So, as long as it doesn't go off randomly, then I'm alright.